Let's talk about dirigibles. No, not dyslexic gerbils, dirigibles. Dirigibles, airships, come on. Dirigibles like these were once considered the future of transportation back before wild dreams of aviation could even fathom today's modern wonders. Like opening up a credit card to get free drinks in a waiting room before being crammed by the dozen into 32 inches of legroom for an hour long journey in the air from New York to Philadelphia. Lighter than air aircraft like dirigibles come in a few different forms. Some, like Zeppelins, are hydrogen filled gas bags with rigid structures. Invented in the late 1800s and commercialized in the early 1910s, Zeppelins were once considered the ocean liners of the sky. That didn't mean they experienced frequent norovirus outbreaks, rather they offered transatlantic flights with first class accommodations. Inside, a hermetic roof that excluded oxygen covered spacious cabins and this uh, beautiful for the time dining room. Starting in 1928, the German Graf Zeppelin made nearly 600 flights over nine years of service. It was operated by a crew of 36 and carried a whopping 24 passengers per journey, or about six people less than your standard bus. On airships like the Hindenburg, patrons could dine on a menu of boiled eggs, beef broth, and cheese. But the Hindenburg isn't famous for its air fare. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's famous for this. Oh, the humanity. Zeppelin's kind of lost their cool after, you know, that massive explosion that killed 35 people. But that doesn't mean dirigibles definitively disappeared. Another type of dirigible is the blimp, which relies on a lifting gas like helium, but does not contain a rigid structure. Our nation's Navy used machine gun equipped blimps during World War II for search and patrol operations, and blimps remained in military service until the 1950s. One company that made blimps for the military is Goodyear, which took a break from crafting floating advertisements for its rubber products to aid the Navy before going back to crafting floating advertisements for its rubber products. Today, there are four Goodyear blimps in service, which seems like a lot of floating advertisements for its rubber products, but according to Reader's Digest, that's almost a fifth of all of the existing blimps that are around today. They said last year the consensus finds there are only 25 blimps left, and the half that are still in use are used for advertising purposes. Indeed, here's a little parade of them from back in 2012. In recent years, they've peddled everything from insurance to grocery stores to hideous cartoon characters to the murderous former president of the Philippines to steakhouses in partnership with a 38% Rotten Tomatoes film. Based on its logo, you wouldn't necessarily be wrong for assuming that the sandwich chain Blimpy has its own blimp. But you are, in fact, very wrong. Now, Blimpy is named for a blimp, I, I think. Deep in the New York Times archive, Blimpy's founder told the paper of record in 1987 that he went through the dictionary one word at a time until he came across the word blimp, which sounded more like a sandwich than a sub or a hoagie. Maybe he was right. Though when you consider this $17,1160 calorie pile of turkey, roast beef, proscatini, slam, provolone, and all the trimmings, the blimp doesn't exactly scream lighter than air. Elsewhere in that article, the president of Subway noted that he prefers Subway sandwiches to Blimpy Blimpies because we add a dill pickle, black olives, and a green pepper that they don't. Those are some fighting words, and 36 years later, Subway still seems salty and peppery and oily and vinegary about the competition. And this month, they'll finally be out blimping Blimpy with a blimp of its bone. Own. Own. Feast your eyes on Subway in the Sky, a giant blimp that looks like a gigantic foot-long cold-cut sandwich. It's the first blimp in some time that makes you trade thoughts of, I need to rotate my tires, for thoughts of, I hope that aircraft hangar is refrigerated. Build as an entirely new dining experience that just took to the skies over Labor Day weekend, up to 40 fans per day will get to float 1,000 feet above the ground to enjoy a Delhi Hero sub that is also available at many gas stations and strip malls across the country. If you want to try to reserve a seat, you have to save your spot online at register.subwayinthesky.com. Kansas City is already sold out, but you can still register to fly over Orlando and the Miami area beginning on September 16th. Experts note that when up in the air, food doesn't always taste so good because of the combination of dry air, low pressure, and noises that impact our sense of smell and taste. Enjoy your sandwich.